very much, Chairman, and it's a pleasure to be here uh, in what I consider one of the most vital causes for working people across the globe, uh, which is happening today. I think we probably live in the most dangerous times. I remember the Cuban Missile, missile Crisis. But I think we now live in probably the most dangerous world we, we've ever lived in. And I think one of the main men to blame for that was a fellow called Blair, who was an MP in Durham. He's created IS. He's had wars across the Middle East. He's now a multi-millionaire. Maybe he's two or three times over. I don't know what he's got. I didn't know what his objectives were. And I can tell you now, when he came into Durham in 1982, I think it was a three to seek nomination, I had the disgust and pleasure of speaking alongside him on a couple of occasions. And that man, to me, has been one of the most dangerous men we've ever had since uh, the Second World War in any country. And I'm very, very fearful, uh, not for myself, I'm at the end of my time, but uh, I'm very, very fearful for the youth of this country. And uh, when you say things like, or hear things like I heard this morning, that uh, one of the trade unions' major leaders, one of the biggest trade unions in the country, has been knighted, it absolutely frightens the life out of me. Uh, that we can have men in them, very, very key positions, which when the struggle develops into a fight, it'll be part and parcel, or should be part and parcel, parcel of, of uh, galvanizing the working class under the trade union banner. So we're living in massive dangerous times, and fascism, in my opinion, is the offshot of the crisis of capitalism. I can remember uh, my father, I'm a fourth generation coal miner, I remember my father telling me of 1926, the general strike, where we were led down by the TUC in 1984 in our struggle. Mm -hmm. We were worse led down than our forefathers were in 1926. But I can remember the Donbass coalfield in particular from the stories of my father linking up and supporting Durham miners at Chopin, which is known as Little Moscow, uh, in Durham. And the banner of the Chopin Miners is the most famous in, international banner in the, in the world. It, it bears the portraits of Karl Marx, uh, Lenin, and Keir Hardy, who is his centenary of his death this year. And I didn't know after him if Keir Hardy walked through that door to death and, and knew what was happening, he'd be spinning in his grave and saying, what then, where the hell we ended up an hour then we ended up like that. But that's, that's another story. But we've had a, a commitment from the NUM over many, many years against oppression, against racism, against fascism, against discrimination. And we've been brought up with that as a vanguard in our movement. You look back to the Spanish Civil War, uh, when many, many miners joined up and fought in the International Brigade. Many lost their lives, not a lot came back. But we have recently discovered in Newcastle a banner which went up in 1938 when they were welcomed back. We've got a banner in the, in the plaque in the Miners Hall in Durham celebrating the brave men who gave their lives against fascism. And if the British government at that time had supported the fight against Franco, we may not have had a Second World War, which was horrendous to every country uh, in Europe in particular and, and, and across the world. So, within a period where I'm very, very fearful of what's going to happen next, we see the youth of our country, probably the best educated, unemployed youth has ever been in the world. We see our pit community is decimated with another five years of this government who got re elected. After kicking us for five years, uh, with a bunch of uh, Canadians, really, the really, really Dems, they know we're on the heart to do whatever they like. And I noticed yesterday, there was a, a disclosure yesterday about Orgrave. I was in Orgrave, and I'll tell you now. Very, very frightening experience. The police brutality was the worst ever seen in the British <coughs> mainland, and I don't we're going to say that again, but I'm sure we will if situations like this develop and we form a resistance. 
And that decision, I've read it, I've read it coming down on the train yesterday. That's an absolute whitewash. So we're never going to get any justice. We never will in the society and system we live in. But to get back to Donbass and, and, and the Eastern Ukraine, uh, in 1990 I went there when first strike was, was about. And uh, the country has a lot to offer, and certainly as far as energy is concerned. And every country in the world needs energy. Every, we've just had a world, practically the third world war created by in, in the Middle East by Blair uh, and his comrade Bush. And we've got a situation now today where, to me, was the crisis of capitalism either ends in wars or it ends in blatant fascism. And that's where we are about now. The Labour Party itself, which I dropped out of when the while we're dipping in the trough, some of them were very, very long time standing comrades and friends of mine. I was disgusted by that, and I still am today. Some people I've never talked to today since then, four or five years ago, and I'll never ever talk to them. They're worse than scabs in the coal mining industry because they were in a good job supporting the, supporting the, or supposing to represent the working class, and all they were doing was filling the pots. I remember the day when I was a young man where the Labour politicians were in the coal fields, were just like working men. Okay, they got paid a little bit more, but they were in the business of politics to improve the lot of working people. Today, almost 95% of them were on, on what I hear about, are in the business of filling the pockets. And that's yeah. the only thing that is there. We've got four people running on, diversifying from, I'll come back to Don Bastard and the UK, I promise you. We've got four people standing for the leadership. You might as well put the four names in a hat and draw somebody else. No, there aren't much of a much. But anyway, yeah, that's beside the point. I went to Donbass, Coldfield in 1990 when Perth was on. It's a beautiful country. It's a country with massive reserves, the brave men of uh, the Soviet Union, that was called at one time. And today we rely on that area for most of our gas, our oil, and our coal. Coal still coming into Britain from the, the, from the Soviet Union, and especially from, from Ukraine. And we owe the struggle that's going on in there support, our support. Because the struggle I've seen in Donbass in, in, in the post-striker uh, uh, period, the workers want to get paid, they still not get paid today. They were under all course, kinds of struggles. There are two unions at the time. They had the official old Communist Party union and they had an independent trade union. And the Durham Miners took a delegation across, which I was fortunate enough to be a member of, so I led the delegation actually, and we took 3,000 American dollars across to try and help us. And I've never, ever been as mystified and really worried about where this money was going to go to. We just wanted it to help the miners' unions, uh, and we went across, and it was uh, 14 days of absolute solid intrigue. It was 14 days of not knowing who side, who was on. And it was a, really a heartbreaking time. And I said then at the time when it was moving across uh, the breakup of the Soviet Union was imminent, I said I wouldn't like to be a coal miner working in these particular conditions. And we went down one or two pits. I was always told that the, the pits were modernized. They were as, about as far back as when my grandfather worked in the 1915 and so the situation was very, very traumatic as far as I was concerned. And I've been in a lot of places in the world and I've been in a lot of mining districts in the world. And I've never been placed, more pleased to get on a plane and I'm a terrible flyer to get out. I stood on the wings to get out of there. <laughs> it was an absolutely horrifying experience really and a very, very worrying experience. I was invited back to address the national conference, but I didn't go and I made some excuse. I was never going to come back there again. So I'm not really surprised at what's happening there. But we've got to seriously look at Russia, in my opinion, and, and what happened in Kiev, the change of, uh, of the government. Uh, and uh, I didn't end with them. We've just had a delegation across, and I'll tell you one thing we'll be there. What the Northeast miners are there when I get back there next week on Monday. We'll be affiliated to this. And 
next Russian executive committee meeting, because we had a, a Ukrainian minor speaking at the Gala last year, I think. We had a delegation across. I'll be pushing the executive committee of the NUM to also affiliate with this. We're not, we are in the ring pits left, but we still, we've still got politics left, and that's the main, main thing. So we'll be trying to get it, we'll certainly affiliate the North East area, I'll get that commitment now. And I'm almost certain that the NUM at the next executive committee may national executive will affiliate also. Because we owe, in my opinion, this, the support we got off the Soviet Union when we were on strike, even in 1984, the Soviet Union miners sent money across the Brit. Well, now what happened then was the biggest outrage that's ever been in industrial society in Britain. We still hear the stories of what Thatcher and our government did. And we look at our own movement at the time for the trade union. I was speaking last night in commemoration for a, a lad who worked in the NUM, dear fight a great internationalist, uh, a New Zealander, a great anti-fascist, a great man in many, many respects, and it was chaired by Lord Monks, the young TUC General Secretary. But I remember the days when we were meeting in the Congress House there. And we got more international support than we ever got from Britain, certainly from the two Germans. One or two were exceptions, but not a lot. And we were kidded along the line, and the rest of the movement was kidded along the line. And that's why we're in such a perilous situation in here, as far as two Germans are concerned. I can't even understand what's happened. And that's why the fellow who just took the night out, I don't know how he lives with himself. He's a personal friend of mine. I was in Ireland with him at the Jim Collin Memorial just a few weeks ago speaking with him. And I got this biggest shock in my life this morning when, okay. when my son uh, phoned us up this morning and told us what had happened. You know, it's an absolute insult that everything actually went when our leaders, and he's also an Irish nationalist by the way, is going to accept the knighthood of the Queen or whoever carries out the knighthood. It might be this new fellow who's a producing all the bands. <laughs> and I was pinch somebody at that time. Was it wheels? I mean, it might be wheels. But anyhow, to get back to this struggle, people didn't realise just how dangerous this is, in my opinion. And it's in a place where if it starts and kicks off, it could eventually result in the Third World War. It's no danger of that. Britain and America are working in there. It's no danger of that. They're wanting to destroy any opposition. <coughs> it's mainly down the, the, the eastern side and the west and the Donbass coal fields. And we had, we invited the Soviet miners over again. Whether they can get here again, I, I don't know. But we've got to keep these links and build these links because it's a very, very dangerous, uh, it's a terrifying situation, really. I always remember the Cuban invasion and how horrified I was. And I'm, I might wait up tomorrow. You're only here for a short time, there's no second in existence. And I was very, very worried at the time that you'd probably get blown up your bed by these particular missiles. Missiles that Blair found, or Blair said, uh, was in Iraq because of war or energy, really. The, the getting rid of Saddam was a, an afterthought, it was all about energy at that particular point in time. And there's going to be a world energy crisis. Every country admits to that. We're going to build man nuclear power stations here. Russia's got them and all. You see Chernobyl, when I was in the Ukraine, we went very near to Chernobyl, which I wasn't too pleased about. We met rescuers who had been uh, taken part in, in, in Chernobyl. And I think the duty of everybody who believes in a socialist or whatever inclination, apart from a national socialist, is to try and work and support any workers and any nation in struggle. I addressed the meeting a week or two, but I was amazed because in the Durham coal field, we've never had Nazis. We never had BNP, and, and but they did have a massive meeting, march in Newcastle, which I had the pleasure to address against this Pegida, an organization which is uh, formed in Germany. It's anti Islam, you know, and that's the last thing we want on our nations. We're a multiracial culture, the world's multiracial. And we've got to be tolerant of other people's beliefs. And we just kind of gone on <coughs> destroying and causing enemies for anybody in the world. It's, it's all <laughs> over the world. <laughs> Some people seem to relish in that. 
But when I came, I'd i been to Cuba, I'm actually married, married to a Cuban girl, and we'd been in Cuba for a few weeks on the radio really after Christmas. And this rally was on, I think it was February the 28th. And uh, I got a, an email sent across if I would speak at this rally. And I said I would. Uh, delighted to speak <coughs> after. When I got back in the gap, it was in Chile before. We'd come from, uh, I think it was 42 degrees in, in the Royal City. It was three degrees in that week, you know. I'm strong northern lad, but I kind of did that <laughs> type of things. And when I got to Newcastle, it was freezing. It was kind of got probably minus three in Newcastle. But I was, my heart was lifted by the turnout. The turnout in Newcastle, there was maybe 4,000 people on that march. I was expecting a couple hundred, like other rallies on our address. But that said to me, especially the youth of this country are realising that very much more understanding than some of us were and when we were at that particular age and it's a global world and we've got to make sure that we put out every stop to support the struggle in the Ukraine. There's all sorts of elements there. Uh, when I went in 92 I was speaking to people who absolutely deplored. The, the Germans were the enemy in some of these coal miners, they hated the Germans. It's not about hating nations, it's about hating the philosophies of what these people are about. Racism and fascism. We've got no place in a, in a human being, in my opinion. And we've got to fight like hell as hard as we possibly can to get this type of support behind these people and make sure that this doesn't degenerate into a civil war in, in the Ukraine. Because that'll cause all sorts of problems. Problems that we never know what the answer will be such a thing happens, so it's very, very dangerous. They're trying to take the sovereignty away from the Ukraine. They don't want any opposition to that. There's threats of, uh, of all sorts of, well, integrity of the people in Ukraine is under threat. I think there's been over 7,000 people killed uh, since this conflict started. Probably tens of thousands who have been uh, injured, and I think there's over a million refugees have come out of this. You know, we should be ashamed of ourselves, really, by not doing anything. And by Christ, we're not going to get this government to do anything. I'm not that sure whether if we'd had a Labour government, they would have done much. Because the 11 years we had under Blair and the two under Brown was an absolute disgrace. I spoke in a village last Saturday, at, 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 uh, which was with Blair's constituency when he was up there. And it's a crying shame to see what's happening in our society today. These villages and communities were really nice places to live, where people were concerned and thought about the fellow man. And I went up to open the memorial gardens, and Blair walked on water when he was in this particular area. And I opened this memorial gardens, it's really for the children. And there's no work for any of these kids when they come through. It was a memorial to the First World War, killed, not so much the Second World War, and a memorial to every miner who had been killed in Deathfield Pit. And I could have cried when I seen the audience were turned up. It was only a very small village, but there were about 60 people there, with the mostly with the families, young kids, some prams, some push chairs. And I said to myself, you know, when I was young, when I left school, I wasn't the greatest scholar. I hated school. I had a choice, one choice, in the pit. And I went into the pit. And I met the greatest men I've met, ever met in my life, and the greatest comradeship. I was in a union that was meant something, meant something to everybody who was in it. And I didn't say that today. And I turned around now and I said, we've got the sources, if we believe the sources, to commit ourselves to fight any worker in struggle, whether it be in Afghanistan, the taxi driver who brought us was in Pakistan, you know, it doesn't matter to me what colour man is, it doesn't matter to me what his religion is, as long as you're not trying to adopt me. I'm an atheist in any case, but you've got to allow people to have their beliefs and support their religion. Blair went to war talking about terrorism, as did Bush. There's more threat of terror. I'm more nervous now when I get anywhere in tubes or transport in London than I ever was in 2002. And there's more threat in here of old people. We're all living under the fear of somebody doing something to us 
and most of the people are innocent. Millions of people, innocent children in Iraq, didn't let that happen anymore that we can help in Ukraine. So I think we've got to affiliate as many organizations as we can. We've got to get out in the cities, in the towns, in the villages, and let people know the truth, because the British press will never tell the truth. They couldn't tell the truth if they wanted to. So it's our job, it's the committed people in this room, and, and outside, who are not here today. There's many of us, and there's few of them. So let's say, I think it's the centenary issue of, of KR, as I said, let's get ourselves motivated, let's get the working class realising what the problems are. Because everybody's problem eventually will be ours. We think we're a major nation, we not, we think we're still the great warmongers. We might have a leader who was a great warmongers, but we haven't got the weaponry. We're only shooting the stuff for America. So let's get life put into perspective. What we're here for. Most working people just want a roof across the head, above their heads. They want a job where they can come home and enjoy the families. And here we are in British society today, the 21st century in my things. In Britain, we're in a terrible mess. But the Europeans in a bigger mess. And they are human beings like us. So let's see what we do. I'll be, it'll be my pleasure to, to if you want an a, a meeting in Durham this year at the Minus Gala, where some great men. We'll put one on there for you, and we'll have a debate. It's all about education. The greatest thing in the world is education. Tony Blair said that, but he cut the face for kids to get educated. So let's educate ourselves. Let's go back to the ideals of the old pioneers, the men like Will Lada. He came from Chop on the Red Village. He became the president of the National Union of the Mine Workers, the first ever president when it changed from the Miners Federation. As he, his brother, was killed in uh, Jerama in Spain. And in Czechoslovakia, 1939, the Nazis destroyed an old village, I think it was called Libor. It was a mining village. They killed men, women, and children. Population of about 7,000. Will Arthur was president of the Miners Federation of Great Britain at that time, which became the NUM. And he launched an appeal at that time, there were 700,000 miners. And we raised our forefathers, my father, his brothers, everybody in the British court field, raised a million pounds, and we rebuilt that village. And that is the spirit we can do. We can do it. We can educate people, people that support us, because people are not born racist. People are forced into racism by bigots and people who want to determine the world. So let's get, get our acts together and let's fight back and support our brothers and comrades in the Ukraine. Thank you very much.